Hello, it's Richard Hammock's Calculus One. We are in part four of the course on applications of derivatives. This is lecture 35, the mean value theorem. Most recently in lectures 30 through 34, we studied the theory of maxima and minima, the theory of extrema. Today in lecture 35, we'll talk about the mean value theorem which is a result that flows from the theory of extrema. This has several important consequences, particularly for the fifth part of the course on integration. And today we'll introduce the mean value theorem and we'll talk about a couple of those consequences. The mean value theorem is a statement about the situation that's illustrated here. We have a function f of x that's continuous on a closed interval from A to B. And I'm going to draw a connecting line between the two endpoints of that graph and think about the slope of that connecting line. The slope m is rise over run. The rise is f of b minus f of a and the run is b minus a. If we take a value of c between a and b and look at the graph of our f of x, you've got a tangent line there, and its slope m is f prime of c, as we know. And as we vary c, that tangent line and its slope change. They have all kinds of different slopes, but there is one particular value of c about right here, where the slope of this tangent line the slope m equals f prime of c, appears to be equal to the slope of this connecting line, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. The mean value theorem says that what's shown in this picture right now always happens. For some c between a and b, f prime of c will equal this fraction. Here's the mean value theorem stated carefully. If f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, as it is here, and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, so its derivative always exists for any c between a and b, then there is a number c right there in the open interval from a to b for which f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, that this slope equals that one. That's the mean value theorem. It's important to realize that there could be numerous values of c between a and b for which f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. For example, for this c right here, that slope is equal to this connecting line, as is this slope, and as is this slope. So three different values of c for which f prime of c equals this fraction. The mean value theorem guarantees that there is at least one such c. Here's an example that will give a way of thinking about the mean value theorem. It's a thought experiment that I hope will convince you that you've understood the mean value theorem even long before you took a course in calculus. In this example, suppose you drive 30 miles in 20 minutes, which is a third of an hour, along a straight stretch of road. So at time t equals zero, you start your trip, you move along at various velocities, various speeds, and eventually at time t equals one third of an hour, you're at your destination. So the question we'll ask in this example is, did you ever break the speed limit? And let's say the speed limit is 70 miles an hour. Well, your intuition says yes. And the reason is that if you think of your average velocity, it's distance traveled over time, 30 miles over a third of an hour, and that's 90 miles an hour. So you must have been speeding. At some time, t equals c, your exact velocity must have been 90 miles an hour. This is what intuition suggests 
And really, this is just the mean value theorem. And I'll show you how. The mean value theorem confirms that you were speeding. Think of it this way. Let's say your position at time t is given by a function f of t. That's your position function. So at time t hours, you are f of t miles from your starting point. And we know that under this setup, your velocity at time t is given by f prime of t. Now this function f is continuous on the closed interval from 0 to 1 third times 0 hours to 1 third of an hour. And the mean value theorem is going to say something about this function f on this closed interval. It says that at some time c, your velocity, which was f prime of c, equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, where this is a and that's b. That f of b minus f of a was your distance traveled, 30 miles. The one third the minus zero was the time elapsed. And that's your average velocity of 90 miles an hour. So what's in the box here is just the mean value theorem. And notice it's saying that your exact velocity at some time c in the interval is equal to your average velocity for the trip, or the mean velocity for the trip. And this is why it's called the mean value theorem. What the mean value theorem is saying is that in general, the average rate of change of a function f on a closed interval from a to b equals the exact rate of change at some c. That's the mean value theorem it's very believable, and you've understood that for years. You can read a proof of the mean value theorem in your textbook, and you'll see that it follows from the theory of global extrema. I'll be honest, the mean value theorem is not something you're going to use daily in Calculus 1, but it has a couple of significant consequences that will be especially important in Part 5 of the course on integration. One consequence is this. You know that the derivative of a constant function equals zero. But what about the other way around? If you've got a function and you happen to know its derivative is zero, must that function be constant? One of the consequences of the mean value theorem says yes. It's a theorem that reads like this. If f is differentiable on an open interval from a to b, and f prime of x equals zero on that interval, then that function f must be a constant function, f of x equals c on that interval. Read in your textbook about how this follows from the mean value theorem. And you should look at this theorem as being entirely plausible. You'd certainly believe this, but the mean value theorem pins it down. There's a somewhat more significant consequence of the mean value theorem that really follows from the first theorem we've listed on this page, and it has to do with the following situation. Suppose you've got two functions, f and g, and they are differentiable on an open interval from a to b. And suppose further that their derivatives are equal, f prime of x equals g prime of x for all x in that interval. This theorem asserts that under these circumstances, something significant is going to happen. And I'm going to, I've left it blank right here, but I'm going to put it in. But first, underneath, before we write that last sentence into the theorem, I'm going to draw a picture of this situation. We have two functions, f and g, defined on an interval from a to b. And for those two functions, f and g, their derivatives are equal, which means that at any point x, the slope of g of x equals the slope of f of x. Wherever x is, those two slopes are equal. And thinking about what's going on geometrically in this picture, 
you'd expect these two graphs of f and g to have basically the same shape. One follows the contour of the other, it's just higher up. You would expect from this picture that the function f of x equals g of x plus some number c. It's just the graph of g of x moved up or maybe down some number of units c. And that's exactly what this theorem says. Suppose two functions f and g are differentiable on an open interval from a to b, as they are here, and f prime of x equals g prime of x for all x in that interval, as is shown here, then f of x has to be equal to g of x plus c for some constant c. This theorem will be especially useful in part five of the course, or this observation will be incredibly useful. And quickly, I'll show you how this theorem is true. We'll have a quick proof of it. It actually follows from the first theorem up here, which, as you'll read in the textbook, follows from the mean value theorem. For a proof of this theorem, suppose you have this setup. f and g are differentiable on an interval from a to b. And let's make a new function, call it h of x, and it, it equals f of x minus g of x the difference of these two functions. Well, in that case, h prime of x would be f prime of x minus g prime of x. And in this setup, in the statement of the theorem, f prime of x and g prime of x are equal, so their difference would have to be zero. So h prime of x equals zero on the interval from a to b. So the derivative of h equals zero. Think about this first theorem up here. If the derivative of a function equals zero, then that function has to be a constant. So h of x has to equal c by the previous theorem. Now h of x was f of x minus g of x. So f of x minus g of x equals c. And just move that g of x over to the other side f of x equals g of x plus c. And there you have it. You've reached the conclusion. So this theorem just follows from the one before it, which in turn follows from the mean value theorem, as you'll read in your text. That's it for today. We've introduced the mean value theorem. If f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there is a number c in the open interval from a to b for which f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And it's got this simple geometric picture. We've also seen an important consequence. If f and g have equal derivatives, as they do in this picture, then f of x equals g of x plus c for a constant c. Keep that consequence in mind. You'll see it again soon. That's it for today, and goodbye.